We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Adoption of agenda. It is recommended that the agenda of the April 11th, 2024 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees be approved as presented. Motion. Second. Vote. Approval of minutes. It is recommended that the minutes of the March 14th, 2024 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees be approved as presented. Motion. Second. Vote. It is recommended that the minutes of the April 4th, 2024 public hearing of the Board of School Trustees be approved as presented. Motion. Second. Vote. Statements and questions from the public. I don't think we have any public oh, here. I don't think we have any. No public. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. Spotlight. Tonight we have Ashley Brown. Okay. Uh, as you might already know, we had a few weeks ago a group of 27 of us parents and students um, just came home from Spain. We started in Barcelona and ended in Madrid. We saw some amazing, amazing things, some awesome architecture, and learned a lot about art history there on the strip. Um, students learned a lot about independence and responsibility as well. Overall, it was a great trip and an awesome opportunity for some student growth. And I have a student here that went on this trip, Amara Walbert, and she's going to share with you. Um, it's very nice to see you all today. I'm very happy that I'm here and talking to you all about this because I feel very strongly and passionately about this trip. Um, before my trip to Spain, I really believed that I was a completely different person than I am sitting here in front of you today and I only changed for the better. Um, on my first day in Spain, I had everything stolen from me and all of my connections to this country and to my family was taken from me. Um, on the second day, we went to the embassy and we had everything practically resolved. We had a plan. I was going to get to come back home. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, I made it. Hi, it's very nice to see all of you. Um, and something i'm grateful that this happened to me because it showed me that even if i have everything taken and stripped away from me i was still able to persevere make it through the rest of the trip and i had amazing adults with me like good old mrs brown over here um she she was a big help and the trip honestly changed my life and gave me a completely new perspective awesome that's my yeah. friend With that being said, um, here's our next trip idea. <laughs> Ireland and England. If we can uh, go through a passport being stolen, we can get through anything, right? So um, the plan is to have a call-out meeting on the 24th of April, um, kind of see what kind of interest we have. We're going to open it up, of course, to freshmen, so we'll send this out to seventh graders. Um, this one is more focused on... Um, outdoors we have a lot of museums different museums in ireland um we can take a ferry over to england and visit london and tour london a little bit to see some fun things there so thank you thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mr. Davenport. Yes. 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 Do you have any idea of the cost of, like, what was the cost of the Spain trip and, like, what was the cost of the Spain trip? Um, so each tour is a different cost. When we started, we decided to start it earlier this year so we could bring the monthly payment down. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't, they, <laughs> they asked me not to be super specific about cost. Sure. It changes. Um, they don't really, they don't book the trip initially until later in this year. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, right now, you're looking at for England and or for Ireland and England, you're looking at a between 100 and 150 dollars a month until it's time to go, which I think is manageable for this community. So. We don't want to compete with German Exchange and Yarlia either, so okay. it's kind of um, different opportunities. Thank you. And I appreciate you coming in and speaking. Nice job. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Administrative recommendations up the vertical. Yeah. Administrative recommendations. Uh, claims it is recommended that prepaid and march claims numbered one zero zero nine four five through one zero one zero seven nine be approved as presented motion second vote personnel it is recommended that the resignation from amy bowling be approved as presented Motion. Second. Vote. It is recommended that the resignation from Cindy Sheets be approved as presented. Motion. Second. Vote. It is recommended that the retirement of Sandra Kashmir be approved as presented. Motion. Second. Vote. It is recommended that the maternity leave from Lauren Holly be approved for September 6, 2024 through November 29, 2024. Motion. Second. Vote. <coughs> It is recommended that Ashley Sims be hired as an instructional aide at Southeast Fountain School Elementary School. Oops. <laughs> Southeast Fountain Elementary School. Um, motion. Kelly, oh, uh, Cameron, Kelly. with like. We're excited to welcome Ashley um, in the second aid instructional aid position. I'm just excited for her to, you know, join our school mission and vision and uh, look forward to working with her. Motion. Second. Got yeah, Amy and Kim. Yeah, Amy and Kim. Vote. It is recommended that Kevin Payne be hired as a grounds person and bus driver for Southeast Fountain School Corporation. Kevin was a truck driver for the past 30 years or a little more. And, um, and while he was off from that, he did training with our team and went back and also passed the test to be a bus driver. And he was going to drive for us until he was ready to go back on the road. But we had another position that he was interested in. So this way we are able to get him in that dual role and keep him here. And um, he's very happy to, to be stepping into this and getting out of being an over the road driver. And we are very fortunate to have such an experienced driver and person working with our grounds. Motion. Second. Vote. It is recommended that Greg Dean continue in the position of the boys basketball coach for the 2024-2025 school year. Um, there are two coaching positions that you for our um, policy you vote each year whether to retain them in that position and boys basketball is one of those um, we've had a couple of really good seasons since greg has stepped into that role and he has continued to build that program and strengthen that program so um, we want to ask him to continue as our coach motion okay. vote 2024 and 2025 textbook rental fees. It is recommended that the textbook fees for Southeast Fountain Elementary School be approved as presented. Families still will not pay tax fees. That's part of Indiana law. However, Indiana still requires school districts to determine what those fees were if we were charging them because that helps the state when they're determining if they're paying too much 
to districts or not enough to districts to cover the costs of textbook fees. And so we still have to to do that and get that board approved each year. Motion. Second. Who was second? Second. Jill. Jill. Okay. Vote. It is recommended that the textbook fees for Fountain Central Junior Senior High School be approved as presented. I will note that there will be another book that will be added to that. Um, we have the cost structure for nearly everything, but the book that we use in um, Dottie Pitt's facts class for child development is out of print. Um, there are two possible textbooks that we can get, but we are still waiting for them to come so that they can be reviewed by the textbook committee and a selection made. So until then, we won't know the cost of that particular book. Everything else is in the fee statement that you saw on board docs. Motion. Kim, go ahead. I'll second. Vote. Fundraiser. It is recommended that the FC Art Club fundraiser be approved to sell flowers to parents on Fine Arts Night on April 19th, 2024. The goal of the Art Club is to raise 200 to $300. And rather than having an annual auction, she's trying something new. She'd like to sell flowers to the parents that are able to to buy them for their fine art students or anyone could buy them for fine art students so that for their big night, they get flowers to congratulate them on the big night. Motion. Second. Vote. Quotes. It is recommended that the quote from Encore services in the amount of $12,921.62 be approved for boiler repairs at Southeast Fountain School Corporation. Um, this is an ongoing thing. Sometimes it feels like, but again, we had a boiler go down and um, had to have some parts and labor from Encore to get that repair. So I do have one question on that. This is truck trip. Is that delivery? Is that what um, that's referring to there? It's no. It well, yes and no. They didn't. It, the nine hundred and twenty-five dollars that's on there for that mm -hmm. includes them coming and doing some installation so the service with call. that okay. service. Yeah. Motion. Second. Vote. It is recommended that the quote from Ed Leo, Ed Leo in the amount of $19,083.60 be approved for a three-year contract for our school website platform. Um, we could do this in one of two ways. We could have done a year-by-year -year contract or by doing a three-year contract, we got a reduction in the fees but also um, we are able to pay for this out of some of the funds that are still available in our ESSER 3 grant for technology, and that money has to be expended by September of this year. Motion. Second. We got Amy. Second. Vote. It is recommended that the quote from Red 8 in the amount of $63,800 be approved to purchase 200 replacement Chromebooks. Again, this will be funded through our ESSER 3, the remaining funds that we have available for um, IT things there. And um, we're grateful that we still have that money to, to fund some of these things that we need. Motion. <coughs> Second. Vote. Donations. It is recommended that the anonymous donation in the amount of 34000 be approved to assist with the German exchange program. Motion. Second. Vote. Those are easy ones. <laughs> Other business. It is recommended the regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees to be held on July 11th, 2024, be moved to July 18th, 2024. Board policy says if the second Thursday is the 8th, 9th, or 10th, 
we automatically move to the third Thursday. However, this one falls on the 11th, but we have July 4th holiday in there. Um, it's going to make it very difficult for Cindy to be able to get all the stuff that she needs and, um, and get it done in time for that. And I also believe that's 4-H Fair Week if we held it the 11th, which um, would be a conflict for people who may want to come. So um, right now I'm asking you to move that month, but for that month, but we may need to look again if if those that fall on the 11th, if we need to revise that policy in the future and always move them to the third. Yeah. Motion. Second. Vote. <laughs> Moving to the project resolution. The next item on the agenda is for the board to hold a project and preliminary hearing on the proposed project. If you are if you are interested in speaking at the hearing, please make sure you have signed the sign-in sheet at the back of the room, which should include your name and address. After a presentation by the administration and its advisors, there will be an opportunity for the public to make comments about the project. At the hearing, we will ask that each person limit their comments to three minutes and that the topic be limited to the proposed project under consideration. The notice of this preliminary determination hearing was published as legally required. The first preliminary determination was held on April 4th, 2024. At this time, I will ask that uh, school attorney, Stu Wilger, explain the purpose of this hearing. Good evening. Uh, pursuant to Indiana law, before you as a school corporation can spend more than a million dollars to build, repair, or alter a school building, that's going to be financed by lease or bonds. If you must hold a public hearing at which explanations of the potential value of the project to the school and the community are given. And similarly, uh, pursuant to Indiana law, uh, you have to hold two public uh, hearings. Probably last week, this will be the second one. And adopt a resolution to preliminary determine to issue the bonds or enter into a lease for a project which again, uh, has a total project in excess of the non-control project, or the school corporation has a debt service fund rate above a certain amount. Um, these public hearings and the adoptions of the resolution are very beginning. You've still got a long ways to go before you get to the end, but these uh, establish the maximum financial terms for the proposed project. Thanks, Stu. We will now hear from Superintendent Dr. Grimes about the process of determining and communicating the project to the community and the need for the project. In 2021, when I first assumed the role of Superintendent of Southeast Fountain School Corporation, the board indicated that the district was nearing completion of their lease bond and tasked me with determining what project priorities lie ahead for the district. The first step involved having a facility study completed in July 2021. The study completed by performance services revealed multiple concerns for the district and suggestions for facility enhancements. The study was shared in a public meeting in the fall of 2021. It was determined that replacement of the HVAC and boilers at both school buildings was a high priority because systems in both buildings had outlived their life expectancy. The district has experienced continuous malfunctions in each building system, costly repairs, and oftentimes the discovery that replacement parts have in many cases been discontinued due to the age of our existing HVAC systems. A second priority is in addition to the current administration building. The current building does not have enough space to accommodate the central office staff, which has resulted in having to temporarily repurpose the boardroom into office space. And this has resulted in board meetings being moved here to the elementary building until work can be completed. Also, the administration building does not have adequate storage space for all of the documents which must legally be retained. So this too will be rectified through the, through the bond. Remaining funds will be used for potential maintenance and repairs to the school buildings. A strategic plan was developed throughout the 2023-24 school year, which received input from students, parents, staff, 
administrators, school board members, and community members. Each of the projects to be addressed through this lease bond are directly aligned with the goals set forth in the strategic plan. This information has been communicated at public school board meetings and the strategic plan is available on our website. Additionally, I operated a booth at the 2023 Fountain County Fair to share the strategic plan and to answer questions from stakeholders. This once in a generation project will not only address many facility needs, but will also give us the opportunity to lower the tax rate due to the repayment structure shared that will be shared this evening by Mr. Magos. It will also provide the district with flexibility in the future so that many building issues can be addressed before they escalate. We will now hear from Raymond James and Associates Incorporated, our underwriter, Damian Magos, about how the proposed project will be financed, as well as information about the effect on the typical property taxpayer. Okay, thank you. Um, as was mentioned uh, earlier, um, as we go through the, um, the budget and taking a look at how the repayment uh, will occur, we're setting maximum um, uh, maximum uh, project size and maximum term um, and because this is early on in the process uh, we have to um, uh, these maximum um, uh, parameters uh, to allow um, uh, you know for enough flexibility um, and as you proceed um, think of it very similar to the way that you budget so maximum uh, budget and we can always go down it was lower, but we will never be, we can't go over and above that. So um, we're looking out, as uh, Dr. Graham said, uh, there is a work at the high school, uh, at the elementary, the admin building, even uh, also additional uh, uh, maintenance and uh, repairs, and that totals to 14.3 million. Um, there will also be capitalized interest, and we'll talk a little, a little bit about that. And then also costs uh, associated with um, doing a, a, a bond issue or this kind of project. And so these are all maximum uh, numbers uh, totaling up uh, to 15 million um, and 25,000. And going forward in terms of setting the maximum payment, uh, right now um, bonds are, um, the average rate is around for, for 20 year financing, that'll be the maximum term. So the maximum, uh, uh, project size of the borrowing is 15 million 25 the maximum term will be 20 years that's what the statute allows for uh, you need to set a maximum payment and to set that um, current 20-year bonds have an average rate of around four percent I'm using a five percent rate uh, to set the, the maximum and we're looking at uh, issuing um, these bonds probably in August and September. Um, hopefully, um, right when we get the assessed value, so we'll know um, uh, how much that first initial payment uh, we will make. And that's going to be very important because we want to, um, uh, uh, that payment that in, in that in 2025 uh, <clears throat> to uh, be enough that when you look at the uh, overall uh, tax rate, it will definitely drop from this year's down to about a level of about 32, 33 cents. Uh, and that's a, a level um, uh, that's been determined sufficient enough to do this project. Uh, and then also uh, allow the school to operate and maintain uh, it, it, its facilities. And then again, as it was mentioned, uh, it will keep the rate at around 32 or 33 cents ish uh, for a few years and then there will be another drop uh, and this will allow a future board a uh, future community the ability to either do another project or um, reduce the rate or maybe do some short-term borrowing um, uh, to help with um, uh, operating costs or other smaller type projects when you look at the overall um, uh, tax rate again uh, it will the overall rate uh, will drop uh, down to about 80 some uh, cents and that's uh, uh, again uh, a, a, a rate that will allow all of the, the once in a generation type project uh, and all of the operating um, for the school operation. 
Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Uh, we will now open the public hearing. Uh, do I need to? Do we have any? We don't have anybody signed in. Okay. Uh, would anyone else like to speak? Okay. Thank you to all who participated in the hearing. We appreciate your time and interest in the projects and the future of our community. Please note that this is just the first step in the legal process. The board will continue to work with the administration and its professionals to look for efficiencies to conserve tax dollars while meeting our educational needs. Uh, yeah, Stu, could you please summarize the project resolution? Yeah, you have, I think it's been circulated and you have before you a project resolution that's required the school corporation is planning to spend more than a million dollars, one million dollars uh, per building, contains your hard and soft construction costs and costs of issuance and establishes the, the total project cost. It also contains an estimated uh, tax uh, impact. So you would treat it like you would any other resolution, folks, in second pass. Could I have a motion and second to adopt the project resolution? Motion. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Stu, could you please summarize the preliminary determination resolution? Indeed, I can. Um, your next uh, resolution is a preliminary determination resolution, and that's required when a school is planning to finance more than a certain amount for a given facility. It contains the total project costs, maximum annual payment and lease term, and other financial terms such as the estimated principal tax and uh, tax impact. Could I have a motion and second to adopt the preliminary determination resolution? Motion. I'll second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Stu, could you please summarize the reimbursement resolution? I'm on a roll. So <laughs> your next resolution is a reimbursement resolution relating to the financing of the construction project. This resolution permits the school corporation to reimburse uh, yourself from bond proceeds for any cash you might have spent on the project prior to the closing of the bonds. Uh, it's required by federal tax law to preserve the school's ability to reimburse itself. So if you've had to um, had to pay for any costs, then you can get the school corporation get coffers filled back up from reimbursement on the bond. Could I have a motion and second to adopt the reimbursement resolution? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. We are now to the elementary report. Um, we started interviewing this week for our three open teaching positions, so we're hoping by the end of next week to have those wrapped up, um, the recommendations for your next month, so it's always exciting to get to welcome new staff um, to our building. On Monday, I learned testing does begin for grades three, four, and five. Um, that'll last two weeks in the building um, for both math and reading, as well as science and social studies in fourth and fifth grade. Our spring program for grades kindergarten, second, and fourth, and our Mustang Singers is next Thursday. April 18th with kindergarten Mustang Singers at 6 and second and fourth grade at 645. Um, before and after the show, Mrs. Gregory is also hosting an art show in the cafeteria for participating grades so families can come and see their work as well. So it should be a great evening of the arts for us in elementary. Um, lastly, the Thursday after that, on April 25th, we will host kindergarten roundup. So if you know any students will be five years old by August 1st, please have us come and call the office um, so we can get them signed up. Thank you. Uh, high school report. So a couple of kudos to give out to two members of our science department. Um, the first, Miss Cindy Sheets, 
who um, heads our National Honor Society. Her group sponsored a cereal drive um, for needy families in our community. They were able to, to receive 200 boxes, or they were able to provide 200 boxes of cereal plus a $200 donation. Um, they awarded that, I believe, last week or the week before to Pastor Mike McCollum, who works um, for the Hillsborough Church of the Nazarene. Pastor Mike is headed our, our backpack program, which feeds needy students and families in our, our um, both of our buildings. Um, he's organized this for a number of years. We just want to extend gratitude to him. This is actually the first year where he's been able to be self-sufficient with that. Um, years past, the school had always been responsible for rounding up volunteers to meet at the church. Well, we did it twice a month um, to get things packed and ready to go. Pastor Mike has taken on all that. He's gotten some outside agencies to help him. So we haven't set foot over there on a Sunday afternoon to pack um, backpacks all year. Um, it's just been appreciated how he goes above and beyond and has several people working for him to do that. So it's a great program. Pastor Mike makes it go. Um, we also want to congratulate and thank our um, high school science teacher, Mr. Henry Schmidt. Uh, this is Mr. Schmidt's second year with us. We really enjoyed seeing him come into his own. Um, he went out on his own and sought out um, a, a grant, if you will, an, or an award from our community foundation. They awarded that, came in and presented the check to him, um, and that's going to help fund some future chemistry projects in his classroom. He does a lot of great things in there with his students, a lot of hands-on activities. Lastly, we generally don't comment on resignations or um, retirement in the, in the public setting, but it'd be a shame for us, Mr. Davenport and I, not to mention Amy Bowling on her way out. Amy is number one, is just one of the best work, hardest workers, most efficient workers that I've ever been around. Um, not only that, she treats staff and students with the utmost respect. She, she shines a light on our, um, in our office every day. Um, it's just one of the finest people that I've ever met in my life. And, say she's going to be missed is the biggest understatement that's probably ever come out of my lips but we wish her the best in her new chapter she's going to move on a new chapter of life and focus on being a grandparent so we're so happy for her we're also so scared that's <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> all right moving on student report uh the high school will host a prom at the landing this year on may 3rd we're excited to hold this event at the new venue and looking forward to a great time with friends. Uh, April 19th, as I think previously mentioned, is Fine Arts Night. Uh, we look forward to seeing what our band, art, and choir students have produced for our families and community this year. There will also be surprise entertainment from staff members come out to support this great event. And lastly, congratulations to Isaac Gaylor for being the Journal Review Boys Basketball Player of the Year. This is a great accomplishment, and we are proud of how he represents himself in our school. Um, this joke, I guess, doesn't really have a punchline, but I laughed when I saw it, and so I guess I hope you guys do too. Uh, when God made ducks, he said, waterproof that chicken and slap a kazoo on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure what to say. Moving on. <laughs> Thanks, Bryson. Uh, discussion items. So that's a hard act to follow. Yeah, for sure. um, each year, part of my responsibility is to review board policy, make recommendations for any revisions or additional policies and so forth. And tonight I have four policies that I'm going to go through that I'm, uh, this is the first reading. I'm not asking you to vote tonight, but I want you to know what changes I'm recommending and why. And then next month it will be before you to see if you approve those changes. The first one is the um, school board policy 314. That's our medication administration policy first of all in the very number one it said see attachment e as you go through there were attachments e b and c so i caught that and would like to the red means let's take that out and put the green means put that in so we need to change that to a b and c um, then 
Um, moving down to number four, everything that's just in black and white is our current policy, but I would like to add um, 4B, students may self-carry the following medications only with a self-carry note signed by the student's physician. That would be EpiPens, asthma inhalers, insulin, glucose meters for type 1 diabetes, and diastat for seizures, because we do have a number of students that need that on them, but we need something specifically from the doctor allowing that for liability reasons. Um, moving on, the only other thing that would be changed on there would change the revised date to, um, it, it, and it was reviewed in July of 23, but if you approve it next month, that will be changed. Um, next, I want to move to that attachment A that at once said attachment E, um, the medication consent form. Um, our nurses, May and, and Joni, worked together on this and shared with me, and they reached out to other districts as well to make sure that our medication consent form is correct and up to date. Um, but the other reason you're seeing it on here, it said C attachment, E, B, and C, but those attachments weren't in our policy manual. So I am showing you those attachments because um, we need to rectify that. So attachment A is that medication consent form. And in that form, it reminds that at the end of the year, a parent needs to pick it up. We don't send medicine. We don't want medicine on school buses with children. Now, if a student is 18 or older in the eyes of the state, they're an adult. So, um, so as much as we would prefer that parents pick it up for them to um, Indiana law would preclude us from mandating that, but we certainly encourage it. But the, um, it breaks down who has to sign for things, whether some things, for example, the healthcare provider only have to has to sign if it's long-term prescription medication. If it's something that a student is getting for a week or so, it still has to come in the prescription bottle and be signed by the parent. So that's attachment A. So what do we consider long-term and short-term? Um, that's in the policy, let me. Short-term prescription medicine are to be given for 10 days or less. Okay. And then long-term is anything more than that. All right. Um, policy B and C, there are no changes to them. And so I don't have them on here because they're not being revised any. And they're forms that we use in the office, but they're not there's not anything changed. The only change with that is I'm going to make sure they get linked in there so it's not really a revision. Um, the next policy that I, do you have any questions about, other questions about medication before I move on? All right, next our enrollment process time, which is policy number 353. Um, currently our enrollment process time policy says that we need to get all of the information and and then 48 hours um, then someone can come and the purpose of that is so someone doesn't come on april 11th and fill out some papers and drop their kids off and we really haven't gotten any records or anything um so so in it before now we had at least that 48 hours what was not in our policy and was pointed out to us during our State Board of Accounts audit is that sentence that you see in green or that statement, receive a copy of the student's birth certificate. We cannot have students here without having copies of their birth certificate. And um, that was noted that we had some missing during our audit. So we want that in our policy and, and it's, it is what it is and, and parents who um, may have reasons that they don't have a birth certificate, they're going to have to produce a copy of that in order for us to be able to enroll. And that's, as I said, a State Board of Accounts requirement. Next, policy 355, the proof of residency. 
Again, this is a policy that we have in place, but it was something that State Board of Council looked at very closely when they were here in February and um, noted some changes that we had to make and tighten that policy up. First of all, we were saying the proof of residency, we were giving them 60 days, two months to, to prove where they lived. And um, that was way too much time. So after meeting with State Board of Counts, I'm recommending that we move that down to 10 days because the documentation that they have to add um, are things that they should be able to get easily and they can do it in a number of ways. They can bring those documents into us, a hard copy. If they don't want us to see how much their utility bill is, that's fine. That stuff can be blacked out. We need to see their name and address really and the logo of that utility company. They can upload things through Harmony when they're um, registering. Um, they can scan things, they can take a picture with their phone and upload it that way. So there are a lot of ways to do it. But um, in red, the number 60, I'm recommending that we move it down to 10 days to be more in line with what's expected by State Board of Accounts and adding, um, if that documentation is not received within 10 days of enrollment, the student will be excluded from school beginning on day 11 and will be unable to attend until documentation is received. And the reason we still want students to, to be able, we get a number of parents, um, especially newer students who come and enroll right at the beginning, you know, maybe they just moved here. We want to give them at least a couple weeks to get that proof of residency to us, but they also need to understand that it's their responsibility to get it into us in 10 days. And if not, we have got to be proactive about what we do, because again, that's something that um, is a requirement from State Board of Accounts. I did add under the type of documentation that was listed in our current policy, I added current driver's license because in Harmony, that is one of the choices that we allow, but we did not have it in our policy. So I've corrected that as well. So I got one comment on that. Does it have to be a driver's license or can we just make that? Or Indiana ID. Or if, yes, that's what I was gonna say, a photo ID. Some kind I can state issue photo ID. Yep. I will I will amend that before next month. The only reason I say that's because there may be some out there that doesn't have a driver's license per se to show right. that. But and, and that's driver's. just one of the many things. They they only need two forms of ID, so it could be any of these things here too. It doesn't well, I'm have for somebody to who's in new, yeah. some of that stuff may be hard to get. Right. Um again. I just put, for example, revised April 11th. It's really not being revised tonight because this is just first reading. Um, and the last one I want to bring before you and recommend that we consider revising a little bit is our travel reimbursement. The policy for the most part, I'm not recommending changes. However, um, there's a lot of question we do not have in there at all what those reimbursements will be for things such as meals and so forth. So clearly stating that so that that everyone is communicated the same information. Um, and to get this, I reached out to several other districts to ask what they allow for meal reimbursements. And um, that's where I came up with this. And I worked with our treasurer regarding this as well. Um, so. Meal reimbursements, $8 for breakfast, up to $12 for lunch and 20 for dinner. Now, that does not mean that we give someone $40 and say, here, you've got this much to spend. They must bring back itemized receipts um, for things we can pay, things that schools can't pay include, like alcohol and things like that. Um, they can have a gratuity on there, but it cannot exceed 20% in order for us to be able to reimburse. Um, incidental snack purchases for water, gum, candy, etc., cannot be reimbursed. And per federal ID, IRS regulations, if it's a one-day meeting, there's no reimbursement for meals. Now, if they're going, most of the, many of those meetings have meals included. If um, it's a one-day meeting and lunch is on their own, typically they have to pay, provide their own lunch, whether they take a sack lunch or buy on a school day. So that is why IRS does not allow that. 
um, lodging, if it's if there's going to be lodging, they're going to an overnight thing and they need that. Um, it needs to be approved by me at least 72 hours in advance. And the guideline is if it's offered at a group discounted rate, then it should be, you, they should go through that. If that facility is already full and they have to go elsewhere to stay, then I'm recommending that um, that we find things that are within that same, a, a, a similar hotel in that same price range would um, be expected. And again, I put next month's meeting date on this, that I'm going to ask you to revise that. This just gives a little more clarity so that when someone does want to go, they get the same information when they're asking about reimbursements. So those will be up next month for you to vote on. But in the meantime, other than Scott's comment about the license that I will change, any other concerns or questions? Thank you. Statements from the superintendent. Um, first of all, I want to share um, the tax explanation um, because property taxes did come out and there was an increase that um, for a number of reasons in in many areas of the tax bills but specifically I want to speak to the education area of the tax bill. Indiana has a property tax cap for the amount of taxes a school district can receive. Southeast Fountain does not levy the maximum and we strive to stay tax neutral each year. The tax rate that goes to the district is lower than most districts. The 2022 tax rate, which the school received payable in 2023, there was a drop due to some change in the assessments and uh, the county. When we obtained the GL bond in 2023, we attempted to structure the payments in a manner that kept this tax neutral or with very limited increase. However, um, changes in the assessed value um, and other skewed our formula and resulted in a greater increase than we had anticipated. But with the lease bond, we now have the opportunity to once again restructure our payments and bring the 24 tax rate payable in 25 to a lower rate. The Department of Local Government Finance, DLGF, approved our budget last year because we're still under the property tax cap and property taxes, please keep in mind, they fund our debt services and our operations budget. So that pays for everything except teacher salaries, classroom instructional assistant salaries, and some specific classroom supplies. If we lower our tax rate too much, then we would struggle to pay our non-certified staff, bus purchases, fuel to provide transportation, our utility bills, building maintenance and repairs, our current bonds, and the list goes on because all of those things come from our tax dollars. Ultimately, it's a balancing act and we have to make our best educated guess when the budget is prepared for board approval. Indiana law requires us to prepare the budget in the summer to be approved by September for the following calendar year. We don't always know what will happen with staffing needs, costs for fuel and utilities, bus replacement costs, and the assessed value. However, Tom Johnson, a retired school CFO currently working for administrator assistance, and Damian Magos, um, the managing director of public finance for Raymond James and Associate, Associates, is working with the district as we seek to restructure our debt lower our tax rate for 2024 and complete necessary projects to maintain our school buildings. I give you my word that Tom, Damian and I will check and recheck several times before getting your approval on the budget next year so that we can do everything in our power to reduce the school related tax rate. Um, next, 
I want to say thank you to our very generous anonymous donor. Um, we were very, very humble for someone to walk into our office with a check for that much for one of our programs. And while the person chooses to remain anonymous, um, I just want to say publicly that we are truly grateful for the generosity. Um, they've left, but I want to thank Ashley and Amara for coming here and speaking to us tonight and telling us a little bit about their experiences in Spain. And um, certainly Amara's experience could have devastated any one of us. And um, she looked at it and found the positive in it and, and the personal growth. So very proud of her. Congratulations to Sandy Kay um, on her decision to retire. And I wanna thank her for all that she's done for our students, our district and our community. Just a couple months ago, she was in our spotlight and talked about shared with us some of the things that she has done and she will certainly be missed by Southeast Fountain. Thank you. I thought maybe we had convinced her to stay during that time. <laughs> Evidently not. Apparently not. Um, moving on, statements or concerns from the board? Um, I, I also uh, kind of tag on to Mr. Shavey with Amy Bowling. She's been a, a great uh, person to be at our school for the years that she's put in and the things that she does. Um, she is definitely going to be missed, but I, I get her decision and I understand it fully uh, being a grandparent. So wish her all the luck. Um, like you said, Mrs. Cashmere, with all the stuff that she's done for this school above and beyond just being a teacher. Um, we can't thank her enough. And we're, we're definitely going to miss her. Um, and then wish Mrs. Sheets uh, good luck in her new venture. Um, thank all the staff and, and the administrators for um, the things that's went on so far in the school year. It's been a good year. Hopefully we finish out strong. And um, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the athletics that's been going on this year, uh, the drama club. I'm looking forward to this fine arts night. Sounds like a, we've got really good things going, good people in place to do these things. And, and I just want to say from the board, we appreciate all you guys doing that. So thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, document signing and adjournment. I'll give a motion to adjourn. Second. Yes, seven twenty two.